Yes, I agree that the police department shouldn't be disbanded. And I do want to just clarify one thing. We've had tremendous, tremendous help from the county with centralized dispatch. The program is ready to go. We are waiting Glenville to sign on, and there has been some difficult, difficult negotiations with that particular municipality. Um, but that plan is in place and ready to go, so um, the county has done a lot of hard work on that. Um, you will find a common thread in my answer, and that is engaging our citizens. I believe very, very strongly that Schenectady is filled with wonderful people of whom I believe very deeply in that when together can really accomplish things. I think there's also an underlying thread of needing more homeowners in our city. We have over 700 vacant homes. Vacant homes lead to trouble. I speak to people like Judy Atchison, who's on Hamilton Hill, runs an excellent program for children on <clears throat> Hamilton Hill. There's a crack house right next to her, her program that she's been trying to get some attention on. We need to uncover these homes. We need to continue to follow up on getting people out of these homes. And we need to encourage home ownership so that our neighborhoods can be more active with Neighborhood Watch. And I do commend, <laughs> believe me, I am so happy I live on Thompson Street <laughs> because we have a wonderful Neighborhood Watch program. But it's about that engagement of our citizens. And I think we all need to come to the table and to discuss the options as people who care for this city. Disbanding the police department, no, that's, yeah, I, I feel we should add to it, and we also should work on consolidation with, this, with you know, we have a lot of police departments in the towns, and, and with the county, with the dispatching and the jails and everything else, if we work to those, have more police out on the street, using the auxiliary police there for some of the nuisance calls. And then the biggest thing, Jackie brought up about the 19 calls. Being in business, I am in a service business, and we service a lot of different types of equipment. When my service guys have issues with equipment and we get a repeat call, we get one or two repeat calls. As soon as that third call comes in, my software sends me a little email and says, Phil, you got a problem with a piece of equipment or a customer. And at that point, I'll go out with the technician and take care of that problem. There should be a package or a program for the police department when there is issues like that, that automatically, when something like that, two or three calls come in for, for something like that, there should be an issue taken with that, and somebody higher up should go out with the officers and take care of that problem so you don't have the repeats and people going back and having that issue just dragging that neighborhood down, you know, nonstop. Uh, public safety, cameras, cameras are great. I happen to my son's side of the business, he happens to install cameras in, in businesses. And I'll tell you, they're great. They're nothing like the evidence of having somebody's face sitting right there as they're walking into a building. I even had it with my building. One day it wasn't a break-in, but my door happened to blow up because my wife didn't quite lock the door. It was nice having the police in there with their guns walking right through the whole store. We watched the whole take back. And if somebody had come in, we would have seen the, you know, we would have seen him sweat. Did you have a picture of your wife not locking the door? I did have a picture of my wife. <laughs> That's more important. It was right in their face. Well, I spent almost 20 years of my first career in law enforcement as a probation officer and as an investigator for the district attorney's office. I know about crime, and I know that most of the crime in cities, in our city and other cities and other places, about 85% of that crime is perpetrated by about 10% of the same people. So we also need to start taking a look at partnerships, not just with our police and our sheriff's department, which we already have. And I will have to say, with the new sheriff and new administration within the police department of Schenectady, there's a lot less turf wars than there ever were before. Law enforcement has them. That's just a fact of life. <laughs> It's not law enforcement's problem, it's the bad guy's problem out there. And a lot of these people are making a lot of other people out in the community, good, hard-working people, afraid, afraid to call the police, afraid to report things when they hear them, fear of retribution. It is so important, and I tell people this all the time, that you call 911, that you make a record of that call, even if it's nuisance calls, because it's very easy for anyone to call the police department up and get a record of... 327 Patrick Court, where the noise is coming from. And once those noise calls become to a certain um, level, 
you can begin, you know, they can begin to build a case. It's very similar to what someone said about the bar cases. They need to, to report those bars, and then it needs to move up to the next level, which is the State Liquor Board Authority. And we need to be not afraid to make those types of phone calls as residents of the city, as well as elected officials. We need to involve the judges, we need to involve our district attorney, we need to involve the probation department, because they know who these folks are out there. And burglars usually are committing the same types of crimes over and over again. We need to take a look at more effective drug courts and mental health courts. So people, when they commit these crimes, are made accountable for what they do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mojibaron will get the next question. These are two questions that are similar, so we're going to ask both of them. Uh, quality of life. The city is suffering from poor infrastructure, deteriorating buildings, and excessive housing. What would you propose to rehabilitate our city? And also, downtown looks great, but what's your plans for the rest of the city? Mr. Mujibaran, you go first, please. I will answer that. My plan for is that we have to move development from downtown into the neighborhood. And I'm a big supporter of moving from downtown and revitalize the neighborhood. And I'm a big supporter of that. Um, the other question is that I'm really concerned also about uh, our neighborhood. And my intention is that to, when I get, when I'm elected, I will make sure that funds are allocated to the neighborhood so that we can able to improve the life in our neighborhood across Connecticut. Thank you. Vince, you go next. Keep me ashamed. As far as a plan for the neighborhoods, I mean, I'll keep going back to we have to start cleaning up these small quality of life issues. I'll still hang on the same thing because that's the key. And it's becoming obvious that's the key. If we want to improve our neighborhoods and the quality of life in the neighborhoods, well, we have to stop these quality of life problems that are arising. As Denise said, there's only a small portion of the people that are causing these problems. And only here and in other cities that are facing this, we have a small portion of the population dictating what's normal behavior. Why would we put up with this? We shouldn't put up with this. And naturally, we need all of you. Everybody has to stand up and be counted. It just can't be us or anybody else. It has to be everyone to stand up and be counted. We're letting people ruin our lives and our neighborhoods. It shouldn't be. Nobody, nowhere is there where just a small fraction of the people dictate what's normal behavior. It's not right, and it shouldn't be. So again, with zero tolerance, we'll start cleaning this stuff up from the ground, ground up and getting a better quality of life in our neighborhoods. That's the only way we can do it. That's the only way I see. Thank you. Thank you. Would you repeat the question, please? Yes, and I think I should have gone to Jackie first, but that's okay. We'll take care of that. Uh, the city is suffering from poor infrastructure, deteriorating buildings, and excessive housing. What would you propose to rehabilitate our city? Also, downtown looks great. What are your plans for the rest of the city? Well, this ties into the most common thread that I hear amongst all of our citizens, which is, which is taxes. And one of the things that I think is crucial to lower our taxes is raising our tax base. And some of the things that will help with our deteriorating property while fixing our tax base is the new state legislation land bank. If you're not familiar with the land bank, what it's going to allow the city to do is acquire derelict properties and properties that have value, but the taxes that have not been paid on them, much, much more efficiently. Currently, the bureaucratic red tape involved in that is a nightmare. The houses that the city acquires through the land bank, the ones with value will be sold. That money will go back into the land bank, which is a 501c3. That money will be used for demolition, so that the houses that are, are abandoned can be you know, lived in, and the demolition spots can be developed. In addition to that, Key to the City was just announced by Key Bank. This is the strongest lending program I've ever heard of in my entire life. It, first of all, drops credit rating for people so that they don't have to come in with a high credit rating. There's still a requirement, of course. Secondly, it gives 100% funding to low- and middle-income areas for the house value. 
Thirdly, they loan also an additional up to $50,000 for repairs. Catch is, have to be living in the home. A lot of these issues come from our absentee landlord issues. I have great faith in both of these programs to make a tremendous difference in our neighborhoods, and the, the beautiful side effect will be also raising our tax base and lowering our taxes. Jackie? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, our neighborhood certainly is one of the tenets of the platform that I'm, I am extremely interested in, in the quality of life. But I'm also going to ask you a question. What do you, how do you define quality of life? I'm going to basically give you my answer. And my answer is that quality of life, neighborhoods, same thing. We need affordable housing, suitable housing. We need to feel safe. We talked about uh, crime. We need to be green. We need, ha we need to have flowers, trees, shrubbery. Um, I'll make an aside, Reed Tree. We worked with Reed Tree for 10 years, planted about 350 trees here in Bellevue to a lot of you volunteers out there. Um, the city needs, the neighborhood needs to be walkable. We need to have a decent business corridor. You all see what's happened to Broadway. I've said to many people, Take a look at Albany Street, take a look at Crane Street. I remember them in their heyday. My dad, my family will remember, used to live, used to work at uh, Sincora's and then um, Albany Pork Store. They were great neighborhoods. Um, if we don't do something in Bellevue, and obviously other parts of the city, Broadway Quarter will look like Crane Street and Albany Street. So we the bottom line is, we need to address all of these problems. There's no one that is probably more important than the other. But the bottom line is, we need, we as elected officials, we need, we need to convince the people of this city that there is, that they have faith and confidence that we can turn these things around. The problems are not insolvable. It will take all of us to do it, but faith and confidence. Thank you. I think one of the other things that we can do when we talk about derelict houses, which I've been talking about quite a bit lately, and um, there's a program out in Syracuse that's doing this, one of the problems with our derelict housing is people buy these houses very cheap. They don't get a mortgage on them. They come in, they pay cash. They're making thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars for the house. They rent it to someone. They ruin it. It starts on fire. They walk away from it. Why do they walk away from it? Because they don't have any insurance, and so they don't have a. Well, I'm sorry. Let me back up. They don't have a mortgage, so therefore they're not required to have insurance. So they leave, they walk away, they may not even leave, they may be living in some other part of our state or some other part of the nation, but now the city is left with this house that's burned up and you're looking at one, we can talk about the one over there on Broadway. I can name you having canvassed this city over and over again, many, many homes that you see like this, and it's deplorable, but the problem becomes they're full of asbestos because they're old homes, they're full of lead paint. So in order to take these homes down, it's significant amounts of money. So the land bank is a good program for that, but I think we need to go a step further with people and say, all right, if you're not going to have uh, maintain a mortgage that's going to require you to hold insurance on this, we you have to bond. You have to give the city a bond so that, therefore, if you walk away from a burned out building or a place that you've gone let to go to see, then we will take that money and use that money to demolish the house. There's a, a couple of things there as far as the, the derelict homes there. I'm all in favor of tearing them down and you know, having somebody start over and build another house in, in place of it. Most of the time, if you look at new construction when they're building commercial buildings, they're tearing down the old building and putting a new building up because they can build it much more efficiently than the old home that was there and make it a much more desirable piece of property. So they can be, that can be done as, you know, 
just sell the land, knock the house down, sell the piece of property. The services are there, the sewer, the water, so it's all ready to go. A lot easier than trying to build a house out in the country somewhere. The other part is, is we really do tax the daylights out of the people that do do the repairs on the house. My son, two years ago, bought a house on Belmont Avenue, a nice little ranch. Went through with the, uh, the process of putting in a new heating system, putting new windows in, got all the permits, put them all in. And then he gets his tax bill for this year and he goes, Dad, he goes, my taxes are more than my house payments are now. And he compares it to a friend of his that bought the same size house in, in uh, Colony. And his taxes are a third. About, probably about half. I think it was a little bit more than half than what he's paying for the same size house. And when you have somebody who's trying to put all that money into their house and now have to pay more taxes, it's harder to do all the repairs that are ne needed. And it just makes it harder for the people that do own the house. So I'm, I would like to see the taxes disappear. And if you're doing the repairs of putting a new window in, or putting a new roof on. There was a roof there. There were windows there. There's no reason that the taxes should be going up on those houses. Well, I guess I want to say a couple of things. Uh, one, in terms of the downtown redevelopment. When I was first on the city council, I attended a couple of national economic development conferences. And one of the common themes was if you can revive your downtown, it will gradually then start to spread out to your neighborhoods. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that. I mean, it's taken us seven years to get downtown, at least to where it is now. We've still got a ways to go. Uh, we need to focus more on lower State Street, and when that happens, it'll benefit the stockade. Um, I think we've got the, um, with the development of the Alco site, that's going to be benefit the East Front Street area. Um, so as I said, I think, you know, this is starting, but again, it's going to take lots of time. Um, a couple of the other things that we're doing, um, a key is really getting more people to purchase homes in the city. Um, because without that, again, it affects every, all of our taxes. And I think Lisa mentioned the key to the city, um, which is the program with Key Bank, which I think you know a lot of people are getting pretty excited about. And I think that's really going to encourage people to purchase homes in the city. Um, I know Carl Erickson has talked about, you know, when he's talking with folks over at GE, the, uh, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to go up to Clifton Park, you know, it's, it's cheaper, less taxes, but by the time you pay, you know, you're commuting at, at, at the gas, oh, gasoline costs and things like that, you know, it's really a benefit to live in the city and hopefully this program is going to help with that. Um, we're also trying to do some other things now um, with doing some of these code, we don't like to use the word sweeps, but um, Acting Mayor McCarthy is really trying to focus on really identifying the worst homes and going after them. We recently also passed legislation that allows us to go after the delinquent property owner who owns more than one property. Before, we could only penalize them based on one individual property. Now we can look at multiple properties that they own and take action. Thanks. Look at multiple properties that they own and take action. Thanks. And have a Thank you. It's wonderful to talk about these key to the city uh, programs that promote homeowner investments, etc. But the core problem is, is that if people do not feel safe in their neighborhoods, people are not going to move here. So I go back to my main issue, that we need to clean up our neighborhoods, we need to work on public safety issues, and take a proactive approach to solving crime here. Some of these buildings, these dilapidated buildings with the roofs uh, torn off of them have been the results of violent felony crimes of arson. So that's an issue here, again, that we need to deal with. There is something called in criminology the broken windows theory, which means that if there's broken windows, if there's rundown buildings, if the quality of life is poor in the neighborhood, criminals move in. And that's exactly what I see happening here in Bellevue and in other parts of the city. So that's the problem that we need to solve. We also need to take down these dilapidated buildings that look horrible when you're driving by on the streets. The last thing I want to say to you about quality of life, I recently spoke to a voter on the telephone who lives in the Bellevue neighborhood. She told me that she drives around the city and she sees all the other streets and all of the other neighborhoods being paved. She says in her neighborhood, not one paver has come through this year. 
So I think that that's a problem as well for quality of life, and I want to be a conduit in your voice in your neighborhood. Come and tell me if you have a problem. I will bring that to city council, and I will try my best to improve your quality of life. I think you're first for the next question, Vince. I, I really started wrong, so I have to keep wrong. <laughs> uh, you're, you're next, Vince. Uh, this is a financial question. Again, it's a two-part, uh, not two-part question, but similar question, so I'm going to read them both. Uh, do you have an insight on what you would pre pre propose to attract more new businesses to Schenectady to increase the revenue, tax revenues. How do you propose to get more tax revenues? Okay, I'm going to go back to the same old thing. To entice people who want to live in the city, we have, we've been hearing the same, same thing all night with all the questions. It all comes back to the same thing. We have to clean the city up. If you want new businesses to move in here, small businesses to move in here, we have to clean the city up first. You have to weed the garden before you can plant. There's no question about that. I mean, I, I'm convinced about this. That's why I'm going to stay right with it. And it all leads to improving our tax base, and that in turn will lower taxes. We need businesses moving in here. We need homeowners that want to move in here, that don't want to leave here. So it all comes back to the same thing. We have to clean the streets up. All the things that are talked about tonight, it all leads back to the same, the same bullet. We have to clean up the streets. Then we can entice new businesses to want to live here. We had my family business that I grew up in was on, it wasn't called Hamilton Hill. It was on Craig Street and right behind the Albany Pork Store. We had to leave there in 1983 because customers did not want to come there anymore. They were afraid to come there. That's why we had to leave. And that's the reason. So it's simple. As far as I'm concerned, it's simple. The answer here is first thing we have to do is clean up the streets. Thank you. Okay,